and welcome to Tuesdays with Annette. That's right, it's the apron time because it's home ec with Annette and I hope you've downloaded the recipe for today which is a wonderful stir fry. It's from book three and it is the Mongolian lamb. It is, I don't know, a classic Chinese favourite and we're going to make it today together. So I hope you've got the recipe, you've got your ingredients, but before we get into it, you know what we do on a Tuesday? We wash our hands, that's right. So I've got my special soapy stuff. <laughs> What's it called? Deterro. Deterro? On guard. I find it fantastic um, for making sure you giving your hands a really good hygienic clean. And I'm sending my love to everybody in lockdown. I mean, look, what a great way to spend a bit of time with me on a Tuesday. So thanks for joining me, whether you're in lockdown or not. I appreciate your support for this show. And so washing hands. That's got that out of the way. Fantastic. Now, we have winners from last week, which were very excited girls. Helen Aldridge, Sherlyn Howard and Gwenda Stephen. All were fizzy about winning a cookbook. And how they won that is because they posted a picture of their bread and butter pudding. Thank you for everybody that was loving the show last week. Because you know what? I'm bringing the classics back. Because why not? Now, <clears throat> with this Mongolian lamb recipe, we need some stuff to get us cooking. So I've got my tosser. <laughs> I've got a spoon as well. I've got some measure spoons and I've got a measure cup. I've got some two chopping boards because one is for the lamb and the next one is to do the veggies. And I've got all my ingredients and my fry pan. I've got my wok behind me. I'll grab that in a minute because what I'm going to show you is how to toast your sesame seeds. We're going to do that first, okay? So what do we need? Okay, sesame seeds, that's right. You need 600 grams of the really lean lamb leg steak. And this is where it really knocks the fat down because lamb can be quite high in fat, but it's the lamb leg steaks that are fabulous. Now, you maybe don't like lamb, that's okay. The variations are rump, which is um, 8.2 grams of fat. The lamb is 10. And the chicken, if you want to do chicken breast, is 3.7 grams of fat. And traditionally, the Mongolian lamb would be at least 20 grams of fat. But what is really the problem with that type of um, Chinese dish is the high sodium content. But for me, I knock it down. So let's look at it. Sesame seeds, we need two teaspoons. You got that? We've got, I've got my 600 grams and I cut the fat off before just to save time. So whenever you're doing a recipe with me, always make sure you prep your meat up first because we don't need to do that in the show. So that's great. We need some um, garlic and ginger. I've got an onion here because uh, we need one cup. Now, it says in the recipe a cup of capsicum, but you know, I like to mix and match because it's all about the look. So I've got green and red. You don't have to, you can just do one color, but I like it with the brown mix and having the two different colors. It really makes it look a bit fabulous. We also need some um, hoisin sauce. You need some low salt soy sauce. You need some oyster sauce. Now, all these are readily available in your supermarket with the Asian section. We need some beef low fat stock, uh, no fat, low salt stock powder, the macelle. I've got a little bit of sugar, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Also, corn flour, and just back here, I've got a cup of water. And I've got my fabulous uh, rice bran oil spray that I use on my neoclam pans. Now, we've got measure spoons, we've got our utensils. So, are you ready to start? So first of all, I'm going to actually um, move this over. I'll bring that back in a minute because I want to do the sesame seeds first. So this is how I do it. All right, so we want two teaspoons and I'm going to do it just quickly in the pan. Now you could actually do it in the pan you're using um, so you save washing up, but I'm just going to make it easier for myself by doing um, it on the separate one. Two teaspoons. Look, if you're not into sesame seeds, you don't have to use them. But traditionally, in Mongolian lamb, you actually do put it on the top. Now, or they might actually mix it in. But I like to put it on top. And that way, you know, you actually feel and taste the sesame seeds and you can see them. Well, hello, if you've just joined me on Home Ec with Annette on Tuesday, I'm making Mongolian lamb out of book three. Now, you can see I'm just moving them around. 
You can actually, if you wanted, do them under the grill and you put a piece of foil down, put the sesame seeds on it under the grill. But if you're like me, I lose track of where I'm at and suddenly I'm smelling burnt sesame seeds. This way I'm standing here watching it and controlling it better. And I think that that's what I like. So you just toast them first. Look, really, sesame seeds should always be toasted because they get a stronger flavour than when they're just raw. And I think that they make this dish fantastic. That's looking pretty good. How are you going with your sesame seeds? You can see they're browning up nicely. I'm just moving them around in my fabulous Neoflam nonstick pan. I think we are done with that. Perfect. Actually, um, Diane, can you just grab me a little dish to put this in because I don't want it to keep cooking in the pan. Just up there, there's a little... Actually, no, I'll get one here. Excuse me one moment. Here we go. Yeah, see, they're perfect now. And that's what you want, a nice brown, but not dark brown um, sesame seeds. And um, I'm just going to put that over here. I don't need my pan anymore. But that's what you do. Get it out of the way first. Now, you'll notice I've got a sponge. And I always like to use a sponge when I'm chopping. Because what that does, it holds it secure as well as softens the noise. And so, let's start. Now, I reckon, let's get the meat out of the way first. So, you want strips of lamb. So, I'm going to just cut that down like this. Depending on the size of your lamb cutlets or steaks, I should say, how big you want the strips to be. You don't want them really thick because at the end of the day, this is a Chinese recipe. I mean, you may even want to put it, use uh, chopsticks. I know Bill likes using the chopsticks, but I'm sorry, I just get a fork and spoon because I want it in my mouth easy. Now, actually, interesting enough, I did my research on this and it's not actually, believe it or not, this recipe is not from Mongolia. Why, you say? Because it's called Mongolian lamb. Well, I did my research and it's actually a Chinese recipe. It's from China. And when you look at where Mongolia is, you'll see that it definitely would be influenced by China because it's up the top of China. So it is one of those dishes that you always get from your Chinese restaurant, don't you? Now, I love the lamb, but remember you can, if you wish, you can make it with uh, the rump or you can do it with chicken. Now, remember, this recipe is there for you on the website. If you didn't think ahead and you said, oh, I haven't got the ingredients, I can't make it with you. Well, you know what? You've got all week to make it and all you have to do is put the recipe Take a picture of it at the end, as you know, and take a photo, and then you'll be in it to win it. How are you going with your lamb? I'm nearly done here. This is enough. It serves four people. It freezes really well, so that's an important thing. And I always serve this with rice, and I always use basmati. Okay, so are we done with our meat? I'm going to just take this over, swap boards and knives. And, of course, I'm going to wash my hands. It's important to do that when you're working with meat. Um, and this is why I like to swap it over as well, because I want to now do the veggies and there's no cross-contamination there. Let's get another knife. And I'll do the capsicum first. I always want to do the onion last because it's the worst part. So, hello, if you've just joined me. Where have you been, Dar? We started at two o'clock. <laughs> but it is a recipe I'm making out of book three. Have you got your capsicums out? Did you notice I just took the side bits off? And it is, what is the recipe? Mongolian lamb. 
Remember, you can make it with the rump or you can make it with chicken if you want, but cutting it into strips. I might actually then just cut that in half so they're not big because remember, what are we doing? We're going to maybe make it with chopsticks. Now what I'm going to do, I've cut a bit too much up. I'm mixing the colours up because I like to do that. And I'm going to put in now the green. You don't have to. If I had to pick one colour, I'd probably go with green. Why? Because you've got a bit of red with the meat and it's all about the colour, isn't it? Not too thick. That's what we want. Perfect. So I'll move that out of the way. I don't waste all this. We have it over the salad for lunch maybe tomorrow. No problem. Now my garlic and ginger are already crushed. If you haven't got that done, then uh, you know you haven't got these, you'll have to do that yourself. Um, but I always like to buy the easy, go the easy route because it's quick and easy. And you know I like quick and easy Japanesey, or should I say Chinesey? <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. Look, I hope you guys are doing okay. You know, we're, we've got lots going on, you know, with different things changing daily. Um, you know, I'm a bit disappointed because, you know, Queensland is now locked out in New South Wales and I can't get to see my gorgeous daughter and her kids, but I get why it happened, you know, but it doesn't make it easier, does it? And for those of you in lockdown in Victoria, look, you know, I hope that my classes and my Tuesday and Thursdays within it help fill a little bit of a void in your day. And you know what? What about getting so fabulously healthy that when you get out of lockdown, people are going to go, whoa, what have you been doing? You're looking fabulous. And you can just say, well, you know what? I'm just simply too good to be true. I've been cooking healthy and fabulous. And it will show. It will really show if you do. All right, so now we slice it. So I cut it in half, not too thick. We don't want huge big chunks of onion, you know, in your, on your fork. So we're pre prepping this all up ahead, yes. So you've got your capsicum done, you've got your lamb done, and now it's the onion. And then, we can start cooking. Oh, look at my onions flying everywhere. I think Mongolian lamb is something that I've had it, you know, for years. It's one of those old fashioned favourites. All right, so I'm going to leave that to the side. So that's a cup of onion, and I'll measure that in a minute because, hello, what have I done here? So, are you with me? We've done our sesame seeds. We've sliced up our capsicum and our onion. They're ready to go. And that's the only veggies that go in it. Here we go. Got my trusty neoflam wok ready to fire up. This is where I will use the rice bran spray because the neoflam, you want that good quality um, oil. And it doesn't have sugar in it, which some of them do. And that's what will scorch your pans. And we want to keep that fabulous non-stick, don't we? All right, so a teaspoon of crushed ginger. And this will really infuse into the, be the meat, which is our lamb. And a teaspoon of garlic. We've got our sizzle going on. And now what I'm going to do is just put in those little bits of the lamb. Look how lean and fabulous it is. And we're going to just brown it off. And it's all done in the one pot. That's what I like about this. It's an easy one. I think that it just makes for an easy dinner because, you know, it's just, I mean, just chopping the meat, chopping up the onion, chopping up the capsicum, and really the sesame seeds, good to go. Can I give you a little tip? What I tend to do, because I like to use the toasted sesame seeds a lot, because even just over a bit of salad or something is fantastic. Let me just wash my hands. I tend to do a whole chunk of sesame seeds, you know, like maybe like half a container, 
and I do it all one go, put it into my little Tupperware container, seal it up and it's there for me so I don't have to do it like I did just now. So we want to fry that up, get that nice and hot and sizzly. We don't want to turn it too quickly. Let the uh, garlic and the ginger infuse into that first part of the, um, the first layer of the lamb. And um, remember, this is in book three. It's on the website, so you can get it if you don't have book three. So that's fantastic. And we've got our sauces here and we're ready to go. Now, if you're curious about the Neoflam pans that I'm using, you know they're on my website as well. And I've secured some fantastic prices because I love the Neoflam. I've been using it for such a long time. And so I decided to put it on the website for you as well. So check it out because they are what I recommend and I'm really happy with the prices I was able to secure for you because we all love a good deal, don't we? Fantastic. All right, so now, I'm just going to sort of brown off the lamb because we don't take it out. Sometimes in a recipe I'll take out the meat and then put it back in later, but I don't with this recipe. So we're just sealing that off. That's cooking very quickly. How are you going with your lamb? All right, so now I'm going to throw in the capsicum. See how pretty it is with the two colours? And I want a cup of onion. So I'm just going to measure what I've got here. There we go. And we start tossing. That's right. I'm a fabulous tosser. <laughs> now, one of the things I love about stir fries is it's all done in the one pot. I love it. It's easy. It's fabulous. And I think most people like a bit of Mongolian. I mean, I'd be curious to know if you would make it with the lamb. Would you make it with the rump? Or would you do it with the chicken? So I need you to vote on that now. I want to see which one you're going to choose. If you haven't already got the lamb going now and you're going to make it during the week, in the comments, can you write, is it lamb, is it rump, or is it chicken? And you know what? It's not in the menu or on the recipe, but you could actually swap all that for tofu for the veggies. So you would pan fry the tofu off so you seal it and get a bit of a brownness to it. I would probably then remove it and then cook everything and pop it in at the end. Otherwise, it can crumble up a bit. This is looking just fabulous. All right, so now you've cooked that for a couple of minutes. Are you keeping up with me? I hope so. I love doing the cooking classes on Tuesday. Thanks for supporting it. And please spread the word. If you know anyone that's feeling bored or frustrated or worried about, you know, COVID second time round lockdown, um, because a lot of people are worried about putting on weight over this time, then hook them up with me, you know. Tell them about the shows. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to now put in a cup of water and two tablespoons. Remember, it's the 15 mil tablespoon, not the bigger one. I'll just open my little Tupperware up. I'm going to do two tablespoons. Fantastic. Do I have a little whisk in here? No, I'll use a fork. Now we put this in and then all we have to do is add in the sauces and the sauces are what? bump this up and give this the really authentic, fabulous flavour that you would expect from Mongolian lamb. And who needs to pay all that money at the Chinese? You can do it at home. And I like it at home because I know, not only do I know that this is healthy ingredients going in, but I also know it's made with love and I like that. So let's catch up. We've done the uh, garlic and ginger. Oh, we did the sesame seeds first, We've, so that was so like ages ago. So I've put in the garlic, the ginger and the lamb. Or is it the rump chicken or tofu? I need to know. And then I did the onion and the capsicum in strips. Then I've put in a cup of water with two tablespoons of corn flour. And now let's make the magic. So we want one and a half tablespoons of hoisin. 
Oi Sin. Here we go. One and a half. And a half. So I'll just move my spoon up to a half. There we go. I might turn this down. It's bubbling away beautifully in there. Half a tea, half a tablespoon. Got that? Now we're going to do the low salt soy sauce. And this is important because Chinese things can be really high in sodium or salt. So I'm going to do the half teaspoon first, a tablespoon, because I had it on that. Move it to the tablespoon. You want a table, so one and a half tablespoons of the low salt soy and just one tablespoon of, oh, let me see if I can get it open. Bill, where's Muscle Man? <laughs> While he's doing that, I'm going to do the stock powder. I want two teaspoons and I'm using the mast cell because it's so lower in salt or sodium. I want two of beef and back to this now. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. Isn't he amazing? Actually, um, you know, it's one of those things that you just... We often make this because it's so easy to have twice in the week because there's just two of us, one tablespoon. Because it really is just delicious. All right, now get that in and I'm just going to add in one more ingredient. What's that, Diane? I think the winner might be lamb, but there's a lot of people saying chicken. A lot of people are saying lamb or chicken. Okay. So the rump hasn't fared well. Interesting. Yes, few rumps. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a teaspoon of sugar in. And I really like this in some um, Chinese dishes because what it does, it softens it. It's only a teaspoon, but you know what? It makes a difference. And we're good. We're done. Hello, Mongolian lamb in my belly for dinner tonight. So I'm just going to let that boil. How easy was that? So I hope you've caught up with me and you've got yours ready to serve up. So what I'm going to do is let's just move this over. I'm going to turn it off because it's already done and let's serve up. How delicious is this? Now if you would like to win book three, you can. All you have to do, you know what it is on a, on a Tuesday? What is it? You like, you share, and take a photo. Hello, I'm all about the photo. Look at me, my messy thing. There is my mongrel lamb. So you like, share, and take a photo like I would if I was you, and post this in the comments, and then you go in the drawer to win a copy of book three. How fabulous. Now, what am I making? on the show on Thursday because I hope you join me on Thursday as well. Now I'm making, I'm, look I love all the old classics, you know the bread and butter puddings, the stew, casseroles, the Mongolian, it's one of my things I used to love when I was a teenager but I'm bringing back another fabulous home style one and it's jam drops. Who doesn't love a jam drop? So you need to join me on Thursday because it's simple, easy and fabulous. But next Tuesday I'm, I'm going back into the arc ages of what we used to make when, you know, what my mum used to make when I was a kid, and that is my simple uh, meatloaf. Tasty meatloaf, it's called, because, it, I mean, most meatloafs, I don't know whether they're tasty. You need to be here for next week because it's a fabulous recipe. And when you think about all the stuff we do here on Tuesdays and Thursdays, who knew? Weight loss could be so deliciously healthy. So, you know what? Make sure you check out the website, simplytogood.com.au, and you'll find the recipes there for every Tuesday, and the Tasty Meatloaf will be there for you if you don't have book four. Alrighty, so thanks for joining me for Home Ec with Annette. I'll catch you on Thursday. Take care, sending blessings, bye. Silly me, what did I forget? That's right, I forgot the sesame seeds, which is the finished product. I mean, we have to have it perfect. Here we go. Look at that. Now it looks like Mongolian lamb. So chopsticks are ready. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye now.